In the previous movie, we animated the body walking. It's a very rough, very loose walk cycle, but it works. Uh, we're keeping it loose in case this is your first time to try to hand draw a walk cycle. But I think you can already see we're doing things here that would be very difficult to achieve with a puppet system because we have a, a really nice kind of integration here of the different forms, the way they flow into one another. I have tried to do this with puppets and, and it is close to impossible. So we have our traditional timing charts all in the previous movie. Links to that below. I haven't done the arms for a reason. That reason is because if we look at the reference the arms hit there usually if you want to do like a really nice realistic walk or a car strong cartoony walk you can always put your poses on the contact and swing from contact to contact the problem with that is usually with the walk when you hit the down pose that's when your arms are at their most outstretched from the body you might find it's easier i have found it easier to do the hands on the on the down the recall position and then animate between that let's see how that works out so i'll make a new layer call it rough arms and I'm going to hide these. I'm going to hit the little pins on those two paint layers here. If you want them back, you just click on them and reactivate them with this pin. They're just getting in my way. So let's get rid of them. Uh, the new layer that I'm working on, we want to be an animation layer. So we click on this little icon here. And that way, every time I draw, I make a new frame. So remember that before we were working from the contact to the recoil. So this time I want to go uh, a little beyond that. So one thing that I can do is a little bit of uh, exploit of the fact that we are working uh, with a digital timeline. We can move things around temporarily. Let's do that. So this drawing here is number one. And this drawing here is number one. So what I want to do is to temporarily move these two positions to here, clone this keyframe, move to the end and paste keyframe. And now I've copied from here to here. Now I'm going from recoil to recoil. The walk's the same, no different. It's just that right now I've just temporarily rearranged the walk so it goes from the down position to the down position rather than the contact to the contact. We could do this by we're working traditionally on paper. We would just shuffle the paper around. It's the same process. Okay, so now I'm going to ignore this little slug here. We're just working from here to here. When I'm happy with this, I'll move them back again. So let's draw the uh, the recoil position. Now, notice this hip here is forward. If I look at this from the front, we have something that looks like this and we're in counterpose, right? So when this side is forward, the opposing side is forward. This is a, uh, I call it a foundation of animation. You won't really find this in the 12 principles. I don't know why they left it out, but if this isn't a principle of animation, I don't know what is. So my course 21 foundations of animation kind of gets into that. My bugaboo with the 12 principles of animation, which are simply not sufficient. Uh, okay, so uh, let's again remember that we are sort of tilting backwards like this and I'm drawing on the wrong layer. So Make sure I'm drawing on the rough arms layer because I, I could draw on that layer. Problem then would be if I make a mistake, I'm going to have to erase chunks of the body or the feet. So we have access to layers in the computer. We might as well use the parts of the computer that um, help. So again, if we look at them from the front, this is down, this is up. So I'm going to tilt, tilt this shoulder up a little bit and then this one down just a little bit. When you draw hands, just a little hand note, um, this is the wrist. You think of this as like a big matchbox, thumb is attached, and you don't worry too much about the fingers as individuals. Imagine like a big mitten, and then you just break in, you can then break it down into smaller sections. That would be how I would treat that. If you find you get into like fiddly territory with fingers. Okay, look, I'm, I don't want to tighten it any more than that because this could be wrong. Uh, I'm going to play with this position. So we have our hand here. I want to clone this. Go to here and paste it. And when you make a clone, see when I click on the clone for the um, the hand, it see the jaggy lines there? That tells you it's a clone. Whereas when I click on here, there's no second uh, line. So I, I noticed too that uh, the cloning of this point from here to here didn't quite work. So if I make a, a mark on this drawing, Oh, it does work. I see. I just didn't have the layer activated. So it's very important to check that to make sure that you are working on a clone. If you're working with the cycle, you want the first frame and the last frame to be the same. Back onto the rough arms level. So we have our clone, our clone. We want to make a duplicate frame here. Click on this icon, click on the onion skin, and that makes it really easy. So now we redraw this behind the opposite side. So in this case, the right leg is back. So the right shoulder will be forward. And this will be very, very similar. Click off onion. So one thing to do to make this easier to read would be just to shade in the opposite. So the furthest part from you will be dark. Just to do this on the, I would never do this on a tie down. And you can see when I go to the back one, it's duplicated because it's a, it's a clone. Same thing here. Ah, <laughs> I did it the wrong way around. I'm going to undo all that. 
see how easy it is. So this is the, oh yeah, this is the back one. There you go. And that's the back one. Now, when we go from here to there to here, it's easier to track. So the next thing to do would be to work on the down point of the swing. So if we look at the arm, just the arm here on the, the recoil, when it's out at its most extended, it's at its most down, the bottom point of the pendulum swing, at least in this reference image here that I made on the high point. So let's do that. High point I've marked in blue, the down points are green, passing in red, high point in bright blue, and then the contacts are, are the gray. So we go to the empty frame here. So this front arm here is swinging forward. Now, when I draw this line here, you may have noticed that initially I, I teased it in like that. That would be a bad design because here we have parallels. So we don't want that. The solution would be either to move the hand, the upper arm, or to change the line of the back to prevent that. But for now, I'm going to just try to get some kind of tapered form in there. And again, this arm here is swinging forward. I'm not going to do anything fancy, like break the arm. Like We can do that in a different movie, but for now, let's just do this. And the, this arm here is swinging down as well. So it's swinging from here to there. So I'd like it to be fairly low, maybe around here, just to give it a bit of a motion. Most of it's going behind the body. I mean, you might tease a little bit of the elbow there. Now we do the same thing on this side. Now again, this arm here is coming down. And again, this arm will be a, a duplicate of the one on the, let's see here. Okay, I'm just going to move it a little bit. And I'm going to have the back hand just come up here. Okay, let's see if that looks reasonable. It's very hard to make sense of this when we're looking at it uh, at this level of sporadicness, right? I also have these empty frames here. I'm going to delete them and select everything and just nudge it back. And at least now we have a better cycle. Okay, well, let's keep going. I think once we put the next uh, iterations in, I think it'll be easier to read. Sometimes with the onion skin, it can be very hard to see. So one trick that I use a lot, hover my mouse over the point that I want to in between, go to my in-between frame and draw an X, and then go beyond to where I'm going and draw an X. And now I can see that I want to be arcing somewhere like this. At least my elbow could be about here. Same with the hand, it'd be about here, there. So the hand, if it's arcing in any way pleasantly, should be somewhere like that. And I can just erase all the junk. I'm cheating the lower arm length a little bit, so I can probably pull the uh, elbow back a bit too, just to try to get the anatomy a little better. So this point here as well, X, where is that going? It's going to be somewhere in here, so I think something like that. And now we do the contact. Again, make a blank. It's very hard to see with the onions again, so we'll just go from here to there. So again, let's get rid of some of the older crud. So we're going from this point here to this point here. I've already gotten lost here to there. So elbow should be somewhere like that. And same here. Very hard to see again. So one of those areas where it's just easier to switch the onion off. And again, let's plot this point here, that elbow from here, go forward to there. So again, my elbow needs to be somewhere in, in this, maybe slowing in a little bit. This point too, maybe, maybe I want to be precise about that. That should lock down the upper arm. The, let's say the wrist here, it's going to there. So again, lower arm, roughly in that area. I won't be a million miles away. Now here, it's probably from this point to there, probably easy enough to onion skin that from red to green. All right, let's see how this plays. Now we're going to still have gaps, but we're starting to feel it now um, that, okay, it's not too far off. So let's go back. And at this point, it's just a grind of doing in-betweens. Before I do all these in-betweens, let's do some, do some diagnostics. So I, I have these paint layers that I've been using for, um, you know, it's not an animated layer, it's just a single frame. So what I'm going to do is just do a plot and I'm going to pick one of these joints, pick a nice bright color that I can't confuse. And I'm going to pick the middle point of the wrist right there. Let's put opacity right up red dot and that is frame number well i'm calling it one but it's actually for the uh, the low point number it right and i'll go forward to the next wrist and that is seven the next one kind of slowing in at the bottom which maybe i shouldn't do so the arcs are looking decent enough spacing might be a bit odd so as long as my in-betweens follow that path, I think we'll be pretty, we will get away with these little oddities. And now when I move back, it's sort of following that arc path back again, maybe with a different timing and spacing. So that's not too shabby. Um, let's open this other paint layer here. Uh, I'll pick blue for this one so I don't get confused. And blue, and just go forward frame by frame. We used to do this on paper as well. This would be a, a 
somewhere we're going behind the body here so who knows uh, but it does give me an idea that the the hand behind the body will be somewhere in that area and again behind the body here that's just um unavoidable with a body part that's out of view so that's not too bad so we have a nice little seesaw back and forth there we have a nice little seesaw on the red one as well so I'm not too worried. The Let me undo some of my slop there. Okay, so the red one, again, these are all a few frames apart and they have, let me put a orange. So when we do the in-betweens here, there's a possible jet, you know, stiffness here where number seven or number, I think it's a 10, this one here, I suspect number 10 should probably be brought forward because that will then open up the spacing between seven and 10. Um, so maybe move that to about here. So it, the danger would be, we're losing some momentum here. So I think this is a good spot to make this little correction. And you can see how using this plot system detects arc errors uh, and spacing errors. So let's use that as a guide. And I might even move seven back a little bit too, just to be on the safe side. So let's do that. So I'm gonna use this as my my reference as well. So that'll be seven, 10. And if I space these in-betweens here like that, in-betweens there, here, and then we slow into the top. I could even be more aggressive with this. That's better. It's fairly subtle. So that obviously doesn't fix the animation itself. So to do that, I have to go to the arm level. And luckily we have this on layers. Oh, I need to... Uh, just select the one arm there. That's the correction has been made to here. There we go. So now four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I think we can probably pull that up as well, just a little bit. And I'm pivoting from the shoulder. I'm really it's just the wrist part that I want to change. And that gives us a nicer slow in then to the top. And then I'm not going to worry about the one after that. But now that means that uh, we have guaranteed nice momentum swing. It'll be kind of hard to see at this level, but once the in-betweens are in, uh, we'll, we'll see that it works. So let's start chiseling away. And the in-betweens are just one-third favors. The first one's a one-third, and then, then there's a half. So they're spaced evenly. I'm not doing anything too, too really fancy-schmancy with any of this. So we're coming from the red one, and so we're favoring the red. One third favor to the red. We always hated doing favors. <laughs> so this is a sort of tricky one. This line here is turning into this line here. So we just need to make sure that that reads. And again, it's a one third favor to the red one. I'm getting a little sloppy here with the anatomy. So just block it in a bit better. And next one. And now it's a half. Again, one third favor to the red. Oh, I think here this one pops on. So I think what I should do is just tease the arm in here. Oh, then it's right. I'm getting a bit confused here. I'm going to undo a bit of that. I think I lost control there a little bit. So on, um, let's see here, I'll switch off onion. Usually it's the onion that gets you confused. So, we, okay, on. Um, this down position here, the back hand is coming through. There's no hand on this, no hand on that. Um, but the problem is there's no back hand on the contact here. So I think we should be seeing it peeping out here. So and I think hmm, maybe, maybe not, but it's certainly making it hard to read. So I'm going to tease the elbow here just very slightly. So on this frame, hopefully we can get away with that. And again, it's one third favor to red. And then a one third here, or a half, I mean, sorry. Okay. And I think I've kind of lost the plot here a little bit too. So let's make a, an X here where the wrist was. And then there's an X there. Yeah, I think I should just delete this and just do this one. So that's fine. So again, one third favor to the red. And we're going, this is the wrist here. And now we can finish the, the half. Let's bring that back arm out a bit more so we can pop in the, the hand a bit better. And here we need to do a half. 
I don't have a sponsor, so if you want to support my work and help it to continue, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I'm making new animation projects week by week and providing animation assets that can be downloaded and used. I also have a very large collection of tutorials in the LinkedIn Learning Library covering animation and design, and I'm putting all the links to these in the notes below.